Chapter Fifteen of Adventures of the Teeny Weenies. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Don Leary. Adventures of the Teeny Weenies by W. M. Donahay. Chapter Fifteen The Great Field Day. The teeny weenies teased the dunce a great deal after his experience in the taffy plate, and if it hadn't been for an event which soon took place, he would have had to stand much more of their joking. For a long time, the teeny weenies had thought of holding a field day. Their interest in athletics probably started from the example of the Chinaman, who had become quite expert as a pole vaulter. The little fellow made a vaulting pole out of a dry straw and with this he could vault over a dandelion with the greatest ease. "'Do you all know that we could have a field day if we really tried?' asked Gogo, one afternoon of a group of the little fellows as they sat watching the Chinaman. "'Now there is the Chinaman who could enter the pole vault. The Turk can run fast, and he can jump, and I can put the shot. Why, we could have a powerful fine field day.' "'And say!' exclaimed Rufus Rhyme. "'How's this for a yell?' Ra, 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 zip, boom, fa, teeny weeny, teeny weeny, ra, ra, ra. That's fine, shouted the little chaps, and they practiced the yell until they fairly rattled the leaves on the old rose bush. Everybody was greatly excited over the suggestion for a field day, and for several weeks the little men trained for the great event. A place was chosen on a fine sandy spot near the shoe house where the little people could hold their games in perfect safety. A big board fence stood on one side, while a row of bushes protected them from prying eyes on the other side. For several days, the old soldier and the Turk had worked hard getting things ready for the great day. Many hurdles were built out of matches, and two long poles were set firmly in the ground for the pole vault. The teeny-weeny ladies, led by the lady of fashion, found a piece of an old silk necktie, which they cut up and made into many tiny pennants on which they embroidered the teeny-weeny monogram. The day of the great event proved to be warm and pleasant, and many tiny records were broken by the little folks. Gogo proved to be the hero of the day. Besides acting as trainer to the athletes, he broke the teeny-weeny record for the shot put, hurling the BB buckshot forty-two and a half teeny-weeny feet, which is twenty-one and a quarter inches in our measurement. This mighty effort beat the record by two and a half feet, which had been held by Patty Pin for several years. The Turk won the hundred and twenty yard hurdle race, beating the dunce by two seconds. The Scotman won the hundred yard dash, while the clown took away the honors in the high jump. The little fellow cleared the match at seven and a half teeny weeny feet, or three and three quarters inches. The Chinaman set a new record for the pole vault. The little chap cleared the straw at fifteen teeny-weeny feet. The teeny-weenies had a most wonderful day, and that night they held a banquet in honor of the occasion. The desks were removed from the floor of the schoolhouse, a huge table was brought in, and the cook dished up one of the finest dinners the little people ever ate. The dunce ate so much of the big stuffed prune, which was served for dessert, that he had to go to bed, but the rest of the little folks danced until a late hour. End of chapter 15